Welcome to the Kriya Flame. I'm Jim Chase from the Temple of Kriya Yoga. And joining me now is Philip Goldberg uh, from his home in Los Angeles. Welcome, Philip. Good to be with you, Jim. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. I know you're very busy uh, touring and uh, lecturing on your book and on other subjects, and you have a lot going on. So thank you for sharing a little time with us. It's a pleasure to sit in one place and uh, <laughs> not worry about what I'm wearing. So uh, we're talking about the book that uh, we can see over to your right shoulder or in the left side of our screen, the new biography you've just finished on Paramahamsa Yogananda. And it looks like it's uh, going to be pretty interesting for people. Uh, you're getting a lot of talking about it, a lot of talk on the media. <laughs> I get the impression that you considered this kind of a way to bring uh, Yogananda just down to a personal level. Would, would that be a correct assessment? Of yes, I, I emphasized uh, the human dimension of Yogananda's life. That's what a biography does. Um, and I'm a biographer in this instance. And I come at it not as um, a disciple of Yogananda's or even a formal student of his, but as a longtime admirer and somebody who has researched the, uh, the whole history of the transmission of yogic teachings into America. I know what a great uh, luminary he was historically and spiritually. But his the story of... Mukundalal Ghosh, who became Yogananda and became a world teacher, um, has a human dimension, which is what I wanted to emphasize, uh, because it's a fascinating narrative and there's a lot of important lessons in there for all of us. A lot of times we tend to take someone like Yogananda and kind of put them on a pedestal, especially after they've transitioned from this incarnation. And I guess that's what it seems like you're you're showing the personal side of him more than the the guru side, I guess. Well, the guru side is part of the human story. That was his role in, on the earth plane. That was his job and uh, how he did it and what he uh, endured to make it all happen. Uh, the ups and downs of a human life, a, a remarkable and extraordinary human life. I mean, we write biographies uh, and read them of ex exceptional people. So if you read a biography of Lincoln or Einstein, you're reading about somebody who's really remarkable, but they were fascinated with the human story, how they did what they, what they like in their private moments, what were the obstacles they had to overcome. And I wanted to emphasize that story because it had not really been done uh, whereas anybody who wants to know about Yogananda uh, as a teacher and uh, to know what he uh, taught and the uh, writings that he produced, all that is available elsewhere. But the human story is what I wanted to emphasize. Is there a favorite story of it that stands out? I've heard, I've heard probably three or four stories about Yogananda that I haven't seen in print that somebody has told me along the way. But I wondered, what's, what's your, what, what, what's uh, the one that you bring home and you think about more often? It's not a story as such. I, I uncovered a lot of details, anecdotes, little moments in his life that had not been published before and that I, I know people, even people very familiar with his life and his work, uh, didn't know and will find illuminating. Um, a lot of them are minor points that are just in, uh, interesting and enjoyable to know about. And some of them are very significant. And uh, so it's not so much stories that stand out for me. It's an overall pattern um, of, and, and that is, he was an engaged yogi. Yogananda, you know, was a renunciate. He was a monk. Um, and he always, there was always a part of him that yearned for the more traditional, simple life of uh, a sannyasi or, you know, a renunciate in India. Um, at the same time, he found himself with the 
important mission to carry out in the West, and that brought with it a lot of hassles, a lot of obstacles, a lot of opposition, a lot of difficulties to overcome. We must always remember he came in 1920. He didn't, there, were, it, there was no real um, understanding of Indian philosophy and yogic teachings at that time. Somebody like him would have been really, really unusual, whereas somebody who looks like him and you know, was teaching a guru who came here in orange robes and long, you know, we, we wouldn't even blink. But in those days, it was, you know, he stood out and he would have endured uh, a lot of religious and racial bigotry. And, and then, uh, you know, he was building an organization and the Great Depression hit. Now, you know, that, that made for very difficult times. And, you know, he, uh, he was a renunciate, but he had, he had to pay the mortgage and there were bills to be paid and all, so on and so forth. There were lawsuits that most people don't know about. Uh, there's certainly not an autobiography of a yogi. So the, the challenges that he had to face and the way he dealt with them is, it was an important feature of what I discovered and what I wanted to therefore emphasize in the book. Maybe the most important or certainly the most interesting thing is we tend to look at somebody now, somebody like Yogananda now, um, 60, 70 years later, uh, and think, oh, well, he was, you know, he didn't have any problems. He was a guru, you know, he had this big organization, he talked to millions of people and all this, but yet there, I think that's one of the things that I think about a lot is that, yeah, even though you get to that higher level, you still have karma, you still have life. Exactly. And that's the interesting thing that I wanted to bring out in this book, because I've been around spiritual circles for half a century now not to give away my age, but, um, I, and you see that tendency, <laughs> you see that tendency and I had it too. You, you think, oh, if I could only be like guru so-and-so, I would not have to deal with all these hassles, these nuances of life, these ups and downs, the, the pains, the losses, the defeats, all this stuff. No, you, you still have karma and the world is still the world. And there will be people to deal with who are not on that same level. And there will be circumstances that you have to overcome. And your body will get old. And people around you will die. And, you know, many will disappoint you. The, the, the teachings of yoga do not an easy life. What they promise is an inner life that will enable you to deal with those with grace and dignity and equanimity. And, and so you see that in Yogananda's life. You also see a person evolving. He was only 27 years old when he came to America. He had a lot to learn. He grew, he grew as a human being. He grew as a spiritual being. You see, and I recount in the book, many of his own descriptions of his inner experiences that sort of are, uh, stepping stones and markers for the classic descriptions of higher consciousness or enlightenment experiences. So all of that, plus I, I was pleased to see that he was uh, aware of world conditions and uh, circumstances in the world and addressed them as a spiritual leader. He didn't, he didn't you know, just chalk it all up as Maya and, you know, illusion and say, oh, don't be bothered. No, no. When he spoke out a, a, about bigotry, he spoke out in behalf of Indian independence movement during, you know, the years, you know, India gained its independence only five years before he died. He spoke out uh, about um, all kinds of uh, injustices. And I, I found that inspiring as well. So you're going to be at the temple now. You're going to you're going to actually do two things. We're going to talk about the book and have a book signing, and then you're you're going to do something else. Tell us a little bit about that also. Yeah. So we'll have I'll talk about uh, Yogananda and the book, and you know we'll sign some books, and then 
take a break and there'll be a segue into an afternoon workshop. I forget the times. One of the things I like to work with people on, based on all my experience and research, is integrating the methods and practices and teachings of yoga and yoga in the broadest sense of, you know, this great system of uh, Indian spiritual development, uh, integrating the core teachings into our lives in a meaningful and practical way uh, and talking about um, living on the spiritual path and, and, and some of the uh, sort of interesting and challenges that arise when, when you try to live as a spiritual being in the world, when you try to develop your inner spiritual life and at the same time have a meaningful and responsible outer life uh, with all that entails. So the workshop will be around all that. <laughs> okay, well, Philip Goldberg coming to the Temple of Kriya Yoga June 23rd, and we'll have a book signing and a talk and living La Vida Yoga, and we hope you'll come. And uh, thank you, for uh, Philip, for joining us. And um, we will be talking to you soon. I'm looking forward to getting my autographed copy of the book. So we'll be doing that. Uh, it's a deal. I look forward to signing it and I'll look forward to meeting you and the others in person.